Hello guys, it's Pug Gaming here and welcome to yet another new game for 2017. This game is Project Zomboid. Now I'm a big fan of The Walking Dead and I've always been looking for games that replicate that sort of a series. And I feel that Project Zomboid really does tick all the boxes. What I mean by that is I've been looking for a game that sort of replicates the series of The Walking Dead, so one where you've got to survive, you've got to find food, you've got to scavenge to find weapons, etc. And Zomboid pretty much does it all, but on an indie style which I really do like. So let's get into the game. The first thing you get to do is choose a map. So I have downloaded a few maps from the workshop. We do actually have The Walking Dead Prison, but to start things off, I'm gonna just gonna go over a standard map, um, and we're gonna name our person here. So you do you get a little bit customization with your character buildings. You get to put your first name, second name, male or female, and there is some extra bits you can change as well, like your hair, what you're wearing, etc. But what you're wearing doesn't really matter too much because you can change your clothes as you play the game and pick them up from or looting or off of actual zombies so <laughs> don't worry too much about that you can always change and pick a mix what you like so I'll probably be doing the same with Project Zomboid as I am with the other new games we'll do five maybe ten episodes and sort of see what feedback we get if you guys are enjoying watching the game we'll carry it on obviously if not we'll sort of knock it on the head there and then and we'll move on to the next there is still quite a few number of games I've got but I don't want to start them all in one succession because I'm not going to have time to carry them on so let's just complete this character so we've chosen the clothes and once you've done that you then can get on to moving on to the next part which is where you can choose your I guess your extra sort of attributes so let's just finish this last little bit here choose the facial hair change the color and there we go so this is the bit where you get a certain number of points at the bottom right hand corner for now we've got that so we can choose we can even choose one of the defaults on the left but obviously because we're a new player the only one we can do is this one so to make life easier we will just select that and this is the game So, the actual start of the game, you start with the absolute bare minimals. There is mods that you can download to change that, but as you can see, here is our guy, here is Jim. And you start inside the house, which is free of zombies, so it's a bit of luck. You can start the game nice and freely and sort of work out how to play the game. So you have to obviously make food, you can cook food, you can combine stuff. It's really exciting how many possibilities there are with this game for sort of crafting and making things together um, looking in the fridge here you can see what things are to be eaten and what things aren't so you can choose to eat some of an item or all of it or just a little bit so you get the idea it's kind of self-explanatory it's more of a case of working out what items can combine with each other that's the difficult part of the game is just working that out but I'm sure we'll get there so I have had a few little sort of mess around plays of this I've done a bit of multiplayer with a couple of brothers of mine actually and it's I'm starting to get used to it let's put it that way I'm starting to understand what you need to do and what sort of items you should be keeping and collecting because if you go into people's houses and loot them there is a lot a lot of stuff on there in these locations and some of the stuff you don't really need it's kind of pointless having but some of the stuff are really important to keep so it's just learning all that learning what to do and one thing I noticed what we need to do is close all of the curtains because the zombies are attracted by the light certainly at night time and they can also see through as you can see from my character when I'm looking for a window you can see that the map outside lights up through the area I'm looking so a zombie can also see what we're seeing through a window 
So I learned the hard way that you should have all your curtains closed. So we'll avoid that this time round. So we'll just do that. And you can, like I say, you can craft stuff. So ideally, these windows at the front here, this door, and also the door itself, we want to also be able to cover those up in the future. So we can get sheets to do so. But let's have a look. Let's go for a quick loot in this house opposite us. So sometimes the houses are locked, sometimes they are unlocked. This time round we are lucky and this is an unlocked house. So we can walk up to the cabinets and cupboards etc. As you can see from here we can loot. So we're double clicking on what we want to keep. You can copy and paste, sorry not copy and paste, you can control and um, tab and alt to combine a number of them at one time. Um, so as you can see on the right hand side of this first box we're looking at here you got the two locations so whichever one you're closest to or if you're close to a few you'll be able to switch between the two so here you can see there's two cupboards if we go to the left hand side this is our infantry of ourselves so this is what we're carrying um, as you can see there's a backpack and there's also what we've got on us in person so there is a certain amount that we can carry and the more that we do carry the harder it is for us to gain momentum and speed when we're walking so if you've got a heavy backpack, a heavy load, it tells you on the icons at the top right, it pops up saying you've got a heavy load and also that means that running is normally, un well, you can't run basically. So what I've learned from the game that I have played is you want to make sure you've got your weapons. You want to get a couple of weapons available because they don't last forever. Depending on which weapons you've got, they do break and the last thing you want is to have a horde of zombies after you and having your weapons break on you so here we go here's the first zombie so what we're doing here we've got the knife and it's quite an easy kill with the knife and you just gotta wait for that noise so you know it's dead the zombie cry is when you know that the zombie is dead but the way you can do this the way I killed him there is I held down the right mouse button and attacked with the sorry yeah left and attack with the left and what you can do is when you move around with the WASD if you hold down the right mouse button you do a stealth move around so that kind of prevents zombies from seeing you or well ideally hearing you obviously if you get too close even if you're doing your stealth walk they will still see you and attack you but you can creep past zombies a lot easier when you're stealthing around so it's a very useful thing to do, especially when there's a lot of zombies around and you need to get to a certain location. So what we're doing here is just finding a few bits and bobs in this property. As you can see now, we've got a heavy load. So this heavy load isn't so bad. We're not you know, causing ourselves too much of an issue here. We're only over the road from our actual safe house. Um, but obviously if you're going far away to find some uh, sort of looting outside of your main town you need to be careful of that because when you're trying to get back to your safe house or a safe zone you may need to run and if you've got heavy loads you're not going to be able to do so so that's one thing to keep your eye out for another part of the game is all about your learning so you can increase your intelligence and ability by leveling up certain aspects of the games so you've got carpentry etc you've got cooking etc so the way you do this is by reading books so the more books you read the higher your intelligence becomes and it means that you can do extra stuff so for example the carpentry which is one which I'm going to try and work on with this character then allows you to build walls build shelves build cabinets pretty much build what you need to really get far in the game so we'll be looking to do that um, having all that is going to make life a lot easier we can then find a suitable safe house in a certain location and we can build a nice wall around it and then we can improve our intelligence in terms of um, farming and we can start to make our own food so we are planning for a long-term survival here um, with our character and that's going to be the main core of doing so Finding food in looted houses isn't so bad. There's a lot of food already in our property itself to last many, many days. So we're going to use that to our advantage. I don't know how long we're going to stay in this in particular house. But I'm sure it won't be forever because 
I have seen on this map from playing multiplayer there's a lot of cool little areas that we can work ourselves into and as I could say once we build a nice fortress around it we'll be extra protected and also we can start laying down some farm fields etc so back into our property here let's have a look what we've got I need some food on this so what you can do with the fridge is you can move stuff from your personal possessions and put them into the fridge put them into the cupboard etc so ideally you don't want to have anything on you apart from your weapons and maybe a few bandages etc if you've got too much on you then you're obviously going to be one slow and two wasting sort of precious space or when you go and loot other properties so we'll skip that section there and we're going to jump back into the game and we're going to go and have a look at this property below us so as I say food isn't such an issue at the moment what I'm trying to look for in these early stages is additional weapons bandages first aid kits anything that's going to help us survive food at the moment isn't a massive necessity but if we find anything that's half decent we'll do so as well we'll keep it as I say, because we're only across the road, it's not so bad to sort of assemble a point um, sort of back and forth between these properties with looting. So yeah, like I say, weapons are very key. What we can do as well, as you can see, there's some boxes on the floor here, but we can also pick up cardboard boxes, you can see at the top here, and we can put those into our property. So you can drop all of your looted items on the floor, but that seems rather silly and it'll get very messy and hard to sort of work out where things are. So having cardboard boxes or wooden boxes assembled in your building means that you can add as many, well, a certain number of items inside there and it just makes life a little bit more easy. You can have a box per sort of type of items. You can have a box of books, you can have a box of weapons, etc. And it just means that everything's in a certain location and it means you can store things a lot easier. So we're going to try and do that. Once we've obviously got the carpentry um, level all the way up, we can then look to start building sort of cabinets, etc. But for the time being, we'll use what we've got in doing so. So as you can see here, you can also turn on your TV listen to the news etc so we've started very early this is just when the outbreak has sort of commenced so the TV does give you additional information on how things are going and again leaving the TV on will attract the zombies so you have to also be very careful of that so you can drink from the toilet sink if you really want to but water again is just as important as food you really need to make sure that you've got a good coverage of both water which is normally held in these bottles and food itself so here we got the sunstruck issue here so we need some drinkiness so I did try and work out here let's try and get the kettle to boil not sure if this is actually something you can do to be honest it might not be like I say, this is all about experimental. You need to just try things out here and some things are possible with the game and some things are not. So without looking online at wikis, etc., we're just going to try it. So we've got coffee here. You can eat the coffee if you really want to. Not sure how well that will work for our character. But for now, the most important thing is to make sure we're okay. So let's just get a drink of water here. I just want to try out and see if it's bad for you drinking from the sink. And then it doesn't seem so, so that's not such a bad issue. But guys, I think for now we're going to end this first episode of Project Zomboid. As you can see, we haven't really done too much today. We got used to the controls. We've got ourselves a bit of extra loot and we've got some weapons going so episode two we'll do a bit more exploring we'll see what we can find and anything you want to add as i say i'm very new to this game so anyone else who's played this or got some ideas on what we can try and do by all means let me know other than that guys if you like the video please give it a like if you're not subscribed please do so 
and I will catch you all in my next video. Thanks for watching and all the best. Thank you.